Today we're talking about 11 mistakes that beginners in Smite make. This will be mistakes from a variety of different fields and I will of course also tell you how to fix them or improve upon them. Also preemptively I will have to make this joke. The first mistake was installing Smite. <laughs> I'm such a comedian. Now you don't have to write in the comments, you're welcome. All the mistakes that I will talk about are mistakes that you can actually fix and not ones that you can only really improve upon by playing more and getting more experience. So I will not talk about more vague concepts like positioning or knowing when to engage because realistically learning those things takes time. There will be a second part to this video at a later point that especially focuses on build mistakes but also other common mistakes. So if you don't see a mistake listed here yet, it is probably on the other part. Also, before we jump in, I quickly want to thank everyone who contributed to this thread here on Twitter. I can't thank everyone individually because it has more than 200 replies at this point. And now let's talk about beginner mistakes. The first very common mistake is not trying out different guards and playing a single guard exclusively, especially if you had a single good game on them. This will of course lead to you getting a good understanding of that particular guard and at the very beginning that's maybe not a bad idea, but at some point you need to learn how other guards work as well to play effectively against them. If you only really know one guard's abilities, then how should you realistically know how to counter all the others? Of course, especially if you don't have the guard pack, it will take quite a while to get through all guards, but just getting a variety of guards to work with and to learn is a good start. It doesn't have to be every single one from the beginning, though I do recommend eventually getting every guard to mastery one just to have a basic understanding of them. The next point may be a bit of a controversial one. I think you shouldn't put too much weight on what other players tell you. If somebody gives you advice, consider if you want to take it, but don't take it as a personal insult just because they told you that maybe another item would be better in a specific situation. Likewise, if someone insults you, just mute them. There's no point in spending time worrying about what they think and they may be more experienced players but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are the most experienced players because after all they're in your beginner level games. You shouldn't write off every advice given to you but you also should not expect everything that is said in chat to be actually valid or important information. The next mistake is of a very different nature, something that a lot of new players tend to do is clicking for every single basic attack because they're used to it from other games. You don't have to do that in Smite. Both on PC and on the consoles, you can just hold down the attack button and you will automatically keep attacking at the highest possible speed. That said, that's not always the best thing to do, especially when you're chasing an enemy. It can be better to click for the individual shots, but just know that, especially when you're farming minions in a wave, you don't really have to click every single time. Another mistake that is very common is players not changing the default layout of key bindings. On PC that means not changing any of the key bindings in general, any of the numbers, which you can switch around freely to find a better key binding setup for you. And on console that means not testing out the other controller layouts with the different button layouts that are also in the options, which are usually better than the default layout. If you want to know more about PC key bindings, I have a video with quite a few different options that you can use that I will link right here. Something that is also very common is new players trying to either only go with what is meta or what they heard is meta or only trying to invent an entirely new meta. I think both approaches aren't exactly useful. You're a new player. Go try things out, experiment around, nothing will happen to you if you don't follow the meta strictly from day one. And generally speaking, don't worry too much about the meta because the meta only applies on the highest level of play and since competitive and ranked are so disconnected at this point, most guards can work across most ranks. At the same time, don't try and force yourself to specifically go against the meta before you have even understood what the current meta is. For example, yes, you can take damaging characters into support and yes, I know that works much much better in other MOBAs. It is more complicated in Smite and if you're just starting out, it is probably easier for you to learn the support role with typical tankier characters. So really don't overcomplicate things in this regard. Just try and find guards that kind of fit the idea of what you should play in a particular role and try around with those and see what works for you. Something that even experienced players always tend to struggle with, but especially new players have a very hard time with, is using the minimap. 
The minimap gives you a lot of information about the situation in the game at any point and a lot of pro players rely primarily on the minimap for information. So using the minimap is something that you should try and do as early as possible. I do understand that this is not easy as a beginner while you're still kind of very focused on looking at your lane or even in other modes outside of Conquest looking at whatever is going on around you. But it does help to try and remind yourself as often as possible to look at the minimap because it will definitely give you benefits in the overall game in, in how quickly you advance as a player as well. And then there's more of a mechanical thing and that is backpedaling. A lot of new players, when running away from enemies, try to keep on fighting them and keep on attacking them and walking backwards. You are significantly slowed down while walking backwards in Smite. If the enemy has significantly more health than you and there's not much of a chance of you taking them down while they're chasing you, then remember these words. Turn around every now and... I'm so sorry. The next mistake is my personal pet peeve. This is also something that doesn't only affect new players but especially affect new players, and that is not testing out things. Smite in his training game modes has an excellent jungle practice mode that lets you try out almost everything in this game. You can level up, level down, have reduced cooldowns, test things on various targets, on structures, test it on the fire giant, gold fury, buff camps, everything. You can buy every single item there and you can try out skins even that you don't even own. So it's a really good place to test various things, especially when you're new to the game and to look at the abilities in detail in peace without being worried about any timers or XP farm or anything else. And likewise, in the same sense, people also tend to think that you should never ever ever play co-op once you're done with that. And I don't think there's such a thing as being too cool for co-op when you're learning a character. I don't think it's inherently necessary, but I do think if you want to get a good feel for how a character is generally used, then taking them into jungle practice first or taking them into a co-op game first just to get a basic feeling of the character is probably better than trying to learn everything while playing them in a normal game right from the start when you have to pay attention to a lot more things there. I see so many players being upset when they play new guards and think that they don't really work properly or bad or whatever without ever having really tried them out before, ever having learned their abilities properly and the outcome is to be expected at that point. The next mistake is one that doesn't affect people coming from other MOBA so much but everyone else that plays other games. And that is not farming properly and prioritizing kills and maybe assists over things like clearing the wave. In many situations you will see players use their abilities on enemies while the wave is not even cleared yet, especially in solo and in duo lane. And this is typically going to lead to your team losing pressure because the minions are still there and the minions will attack you and then the enemy team will attack you at the same time and that is just a very bad choice in most situations. Smite is not Call of Duty and farming is a very important aspect of the game and kills alone will not give you sufficient farm. The minions are typically easy enough to clear but it still needs to be done in order to get the farm in order to actually be able to fight the enemies without getting hit by minions. Even in modes that are not as minion heavy like Arena, PvE is still a very crucial aspect of the game. You still need to farm those minions for the tickets. And if you don't pay attention to the minions at all, it's going to cost you. In fact, when Ranked Arena was still a thing, people used to focus on the minions more than on actual fighting because it was more rewarding to simply clear out all the minions. And on the topic of minions, there is another mistake. New players tend to not respect the minions enough. This is especially an issue for people coming from other MOBAs where minions are simply significantly weaker and don't do nearly as much damage, but also other players in general. Minions and Smite, especially in early stages, can do a lot of damage and as the archers do not have a hard time following up to some degree with their projectiles, you will take a lot of damage from them. So if you want to engage on the enemy, at which point the archers and the other minions will turn on you, you should make sure that you can actually take that hit. There are more than enough situations of new players simply dying to the minions while trying to initiate a fight. That also means that in regards to positioning it's preferable to have a bit of distance from the enemy minion wave and from your own minion wave so that you don't get hit by enemy abilities and you also don't easily get attacked by the enemy minions if you end up attacking the enemy guards. Ideally of course you clear the wave first. The number one mistake that I see a lot of new players do that actually carries very far 
is them exclusively sticking to a single game mode. And by extension, that often means avoiding conquest because they're afraid of it, when realistically, the earlier you start conquest, the easier it will be because you're gonna get matched against other players that are also very low level and very new. So you won't really struggle much unless you run into a lot of smurfs. Now I'm not saying that it's wrong to main a mode if you have a preferred mode and I'm also not saying that you have to play conquest. I'm just saying that you should give every mode a chance, get a feel for every mode a little bit, play a few games in every mode to understand how they differ as well and then see what your preference is. I personally started out playing a lot of Arena and Assault, but then eventually moved over more to Conquest and later branched out and just played random modes in between. And now that I'm in Australia where only two modes are playable because there's not enough of a player base for the other modes, I actually really miss the variety that was available in other regions. Of course, if your goal is to go competitive in Smite, you will probably mostly stick to rank Conquest, but if you're playing the game for fun, which I think is the reason for most people, then there's nothing wrong with playing mode of the day if you feel like it, and then maybe playing Assault after, and then maybe playing a Conquest. Just find out what you like, but don't be afraid to play other modes because of some imaginary barrier. And if you're worried about not knowing enough about Conquest before starting, I will make a new Conquest guide for Season 7 mid-season patch very, very soon, so that way you will know how to play that at least, and you will have that information. So if you're not subscribed yet, feel free to hit the sub button so that you will be updated for that. And in that sense, as a little bonus point that other people brought up, uh, one of the mistakes is also not using info sources outside of the game in order to understand the game better. So again, if you want to have more info about Smite in general, feel free to click the sub button and maybe the bell so you get notified of future Smite videos. As I said, there will be a second part of the beginner mistakes video soon as well. So that's something that you will know about by being subscribed as well. So with that, thank you guys for watching. I hope this helps you improve in your game or maybe if you're an experienced player, you have someone you can send this to so that they can improve as well. See you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.